March 18th, um, Development Review Board for the City of Montpelier to order, and we'll have Meredith go over the procedures to remote. Okay, uh, so Julie, hope, oop, oop, it looks like maybe it's working. Ah, Yay! Success. <laughs> I'm on my phone. Let's see. For some reason, that's never happened before on my computer. Apologies, everybody. That's okay. Uh, all right. So I'm going to do, because you just missed Sharon's little intro, I'm going to do a little blurb on the remote meeting procedures. Okay. So what you're going to see on your screen is more for anybody who's watching the meeting via Orca Media, but there'll be a few tips and pointers in my little spiel that apply to everybody who's on remotely. Um, so for anyone viewing tonight's development review board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want the full video experience, you can type this link into your web browser. Um, oh except that they can't see that on the Zoom X and the Orca. Can we minimize the... Hold on, give me a second. What they see on Orca is this. So, let's see this for a minute, and then put it back. Um. Sorry, everybody. Having to manage things from multiple screens. Um, so. If you're on via Orca Media or watching via Orca Media, you can attend the meeting with the full video options by typing this um, link into your web browser, and I'll get a notification that you want to get into the meeting. Alternatively, you can call into the meeting on any phone and then put in this meeting ID when prompted. And again, I'll get a little message that you want to come into the meeting. If anyone is trying to get into the meeting and having problems, please email me at this email down here mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for everyone attending Zoom, note that turning your video on is optional. In addition, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and finally, note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, any questions or comments about items on the agenda should be made um, by raising your hand and then waiting to be called on. Um, we don't have any, we do have one general member of the public on tonight, although my understanding is that he's on just to observe as a law student. Um, but Andrew, if you do have questions, feel free to raise your hand either um, physically when your video is on or use the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and when the uh, chair calls on you, you can ask your question if you have any. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I would find that out via my email, um, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Great. Um, if we could go through and introduce ourselves from the right here. Uh, Rob Goodwin, Vice Chair, DRB. Meredith Crandall, Staff. Sharon Allen, Chair. Brian Jones, Member. Captain Burgess, Member. And then if we could, um, who do we have online? Up here. We have Alex Halas, DRB member. Yeah. Uh, Joe Kiernan, DRB member. Okay. Um, and then we have our applicant and, and a guest. Applicant and a reviewer. Okay, great. Um, so the first order of business is the application on oh. here. Approval of the agenda. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, Rob. Is there a second to that? Uh, I'll second it. All those in favor of perusing the agenda? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, so what this is, my understanding, is um, an expansion of the 203 Country Club Road um, by Good Samaritan Haven that this group actually approved uh, last fall, I believe. And um, expansion of the area used in an extension to the end um, from the end date of June 1, 2024 to two, June 1, 2025. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Extending the time period to June 1, 2025, as well as the space that's used. Okay. Um, it doesn't expand the amount of people staying there or anything like that. Okay. Uh, do people have questions? I had a couple questions about it. Um, or we could let the applicant explain what's going on. That would be great, too. Yeah. 
Julie? You might want to speak in the microphone. Hi, Julie. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Um, sure. Well, so um, again, this is a continuation or re-upping of some slight changes that we had during the season. Uh, because of a COVID outbreak, we had uh, inquired of the city to expand uh, on an emergency basis into the adjacent office space um, in order to quarantine, and that was on a you know temporary basis. But we found that it was a helpful way to more safely uh, house folks during the season. So uh, inquired if we could expand to that space. Uh, so that was part of the process. And um, in addition, uh, elongating the, the time frame by which we are uh, applying for additional use, if we were to uh, utilize the same space for for sheltering uh, in the coming season. Um, so so it's, it's the general thing. It's the same use sort of ex existing, but it's just time frame wise asking for an extension. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I guess, uh, so Emerita said that there's no additional people. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And right. so the last, um, the last, uh, application came in and we and it was approved until June 20 um, June 2024 which would be this June are, are you planning on using it throughout the summer as well it's not likely but it's possible <laughs> in that we're receiving you know we're in sort of crisis mode in the county and state really um, we're receiving quite a lot of um, pressure in terms of responding to that need so we're not quite sure there could be additional use or extended use uh it's not necessarily our intention um but never say never in terms of how we're trying to respond and meet the need of the, the housing crisis at the moment especially with the hotels um in flux at the moment so um but our our main focus would be if we were to use the space um again as a, a winter overnight shelter that that would be our goals it was the kind of the typical season the november through uh april season of the coming year okay i mean i there's nothing wrong with using it in the summer i was just wondered if the plans had changed a yeah. little bit not necessarily although you know if we do have the ability to use it and there was approval it could be something that we look into, but it's not something that's currently on our. On the, uh, it's not on the application. Uh, radar. Say. It's on the application. It's not right. on the radar. But um, if we were to have ability to use it through that time frame, you know, maybe there's potential to use it um, based on, like I said, the the requests we're receiving from from to, to expand shelter capacity across the year. Okay, are there other people with questions? I have a question. Yeah. When we granted the conditional use or whatever we granted in September, it was only for the winter season. So are we now granting it from June or potentially approving it from June 24 to June 25 inclusive? Robert, yes, all that discussion, that. it just so Very, happened yes. that uh, the dates were in the application, but it wasn't necessarily specific in, you know, the DRB decision in the order that, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we're spelling out the time frame at which it could and cannot be used. Uh, that was more of a thing that was between On the, the Good Sam and the city. Um, you know, they just have, you know, their agreement was included in the application, but like, you know, I, I think that there was consensus in the DRB that like, as far as the rules were concerned here, a time frame wasn't necessary for approval of the conditional use. Um, maybe I'm missing words for uh, <laughs> how I, uh, you know, viewed it and uh, maybe advocated during that meeting. Um, <laughs> but uh, I guess I still view this application similar. <laughs> Mer let Meredith go. Meredith. Ahead. <laughs> so when there are representations in the application materials, those are considered sort of sure. binding. Yeah. So if 
R- right now, the cover letter, the first page of the cover letter that came with, with this says that, um, you know, we're requesting an extension of our end date to June 1st, 2025. We still anticipate concluding our shelter program this year by May 1st, 2024, and it is possible we may seek to lease the space again later this year to offer the elk shelter during the winter of 2024 to 25 and no and no later than June 1st, 2025. So if you just went by that first sentence, you know, requesting an extension of our end date to June 1st, 2025, and the rest is sort of a description of the known facts, yeah. right? You could say that the DRB's approval is sort of blanket, and the the specifics when it comes down to what their possible leases are, that's to be dealt with separately. There I, is a way to interpret this that way. Yes, I was questioned whether that that was not a city decision. Right, and it's that, the <laughs> right the the actual lease terms. That's all yeah. going to be based on the city, um, as well as getting the state. Um, buyer safety code approvals for any extensions. Um, but, you know, the, the DRB granting an extension um, to their zoning approval just provides greater flexibility over the next year to, to you know, year plus, year to 16 months um, without making Good Sam and the city have to go through additional hoops if it's the same scope of use just for... A longer period of time okay i thought that was good clarification does that answer your question alex yeah although i think it would be good if the decision was clear about that about the duration rather than you know if it were explicit but i mean it i don't know what could come up to muddy the waters um so i don't have any experience of that Catherine? yeah I would think the decision from a zoning perspective could be pretty clear yeah. if we as a board read it this way, which that's how I read it. It's an extension through June 1st, and then this is clarification of what may or may not happen during that time, and there's a lot of other factors beyond zoning. But from the zoning perspective, this is uh, like what the DRB is able to, to, do, to, to do. That makes sense to me. Um, other questions? Um. It's the only other area of clarification was the um, just the bounds of the conditional use within the building. Um, I don't know if we could put the um, sketch up. Just yep, I will put the application up. Give me just a second to find. Oh, give me a minute. I have too many things open. Um, I'm going to have to scroll to it. Give me a second. Cover your eyes if you could see sick. Mm, there we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and let's do that. So this blue space and this building entry circled in orange was the original space. Okay. And then this green here is the additional... 3,055 square feet that has the same main building entry. And okay. Julie, cor correct me if I'm, I'm getting this wrong, but this is my understanding. So they have a shared entry, and here's the extra space that's being used, the stuff in green here. Um, okay. And this is the emergency only exit yep. that I mentioned in the staff report that yep. the fire um, and safety code said that with this much space they had to have that, but that is not a main entry point that's that's just emergency exit only and then and that's where's the other bathroom uh well there's bathrooms here in the central right. area and then there's a little i think that's a little extra bathroom is that right julie that's the accessible bathroom i believe yeah yeah mm -hmm. back here in the back yeah. got it yeah. i thought i saw that the child care place is no longer there is that correct are you asking me or julie that's what? I believe you... that's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were asking me or Julie. <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> I guess what, what other uses are in the building? Is the rest of it vacant, or what's? 
I'm just curious. <laughs> um, this area I know is city storage. Okay. Because that's where all of the DPW planning and city clerk files that yep. got wet mm -hmm. and came back are now stacked in various places. Um, I don't know if they're, I don't, I don't know if any of the rest of the space is leased out right now. I think the rest of it is, is vacant right okay. now. Julie, I, I don't know if you know of anything else, but I, I, from what we got back from Chris on it, I think the rest of it is just the city trying to either clean things up um, and remodel or mm -hmm. is using for a lot of storage since we can't use the basement of City Hall. Yeah, there might have been, and I don't know if there currently is, somebody that had a wood shop in one far corner of the building. Um, yeah, back in here. I don't, yeah, yeah, and that I don't shop know if area. that's... Right, right. So I don't know if that's active or not. But yeah. yeah. The only other I had a question I had in the application, um, and I guess I'll address it first to Meredith, and then um, <laughs> I'll see where we go from there, is that uh, they need to have another public safety inspection. Is that right? Um, I think they, and Julie may have to deal with I this. I think Done that. Yeah, I think they Good. got the safety inspections for the use through this winter season. I think that's all cleared up. It's the if they were to extend the time period beyond this winter season, they would mm -hmm. need additional inspections. Okay. Um, but the I think everything got passed because you guys added another um, smoke detector and some other items um, got Much dealt with. Some and things. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've just completed all of that last week, so that all of the current requirements should be up to date and, and finished. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions? We can kind of go to the staff report uh, now, just look at a few things. So much stuff. I don't know where my staff report is. I do not have one. Hmm? I do not have a staff report in here. Oh, well, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> um, there is a staff report. I'm sorry, did Thank anybody you. else's physical packets not include a staff yeah, report? Yeah, I did not get a staff report. Ah, okay, oh, this. Uh -oh. <laughs> Audra and I are both falling apart. I'm really sorry. I only brought the two extras. Um, I, I mean, I read all of it online yeah. ahead of time. I mean, I know what's in here, but yeah. I just... Wow, okay, I don't know why the... I've got one to share with her. Okay. Goodness. All right. This is what happens when I'm out for several days and Audra's getting geared up for getting retirement. <laughs> uh, okay. So, as I understand this, it's basically just an extension of what we approved yep. last fall. Yep. Yeah. Correct? Everybody on the same page there? Okay. Um, that means basically the exact same stuff in red is in red again. Right. Yep. Um, so basically, it sounds like you guys have done the emergency, um, the property owner and state fire and safety code approvals that you need to to get up to date. Is that correct? Okay. I think that's important. Um, You know, not a lot. A lot of this is just stormwater management and erosion control and things that are irrelevant. Um, so I guess there's a little uh, question in someone's mind about whether uh, we should consider landscaping, la landscaping, <laughs> landscaping, or other uh, screening as a part of a conditional use approval under this it, chapter 330. It's not. A question per se it's just one of those things that you always have an option right right That's well I'm all. putting it out there as an option <laughs> <laughs> um thoughts doesn't seem applicable, <laughs> Not applicable. okay agreed um so I feel like uh these yeah these are basically the same ones that we looked through I think we talked last the last time we looked at this about whether this is going to uh, cause a disproportionate unreasonable burden on the city's ability uh, with community facilities and utilities. Um, I guess the one question I have is, was there, um, 
was there any kind of uh, Julie? Was there any kind of like increased uh, emergency services? No, in fact, this season, uh, you know, we've had very, very few calls, uh, police calls, or anything like that. I don't believe we've had any EMS calls. Maybe we've had one, two, probably two, maybe three at the max. Okay. All season, so it's it's been quite uh, quite stable, quite quite successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe in that last um, application, there was an intention to provide transportation like downtown or to other areas with facilities during daytime hours. Is that how it um, ended up going over this winter? Yes, in fact. Uh, so we have a van, a 15 passenger van that we use uh, to pick up individuals from around the city every day at certain times and then drive them to the shelter. And then again in the morning, we drive them into town again because of the remote, you know, location. And it's 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 been, you know, it's an extra layer for us in terms of managing the process, but it has worked pretty smoothly. Yeah, yeah. So. that's the one thing about that site. It's really not close to anything else. So right, right. Yeah. Um, I had a question for Meredith. It's a little um, unusual, but I'll I'll just ask it because I'm not sure what the App interpretation would be thinking that we're now looking at up to June 2025. If there were to be movement on this larger site and construction of any kind starting before that period, is there, um, you know, any uh, awareness or relevance here? I know that's that's pretty much winter, so it's unlikely. But I just wanted to raise it, given it's a large site that could, especially have like infrastructure. Uh, construction period. Um, can I can I add add something to clarify that? Which, uh, which is, <laughs> is is your knowledge of currently what's in the zoning queue right now? Is there anything that actually could come up? Maybe um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just sort of answer but divert. I, I <laughs> in that a slight in that the scope of the application is what's before the board. Yep. Um, yes, there are hopes and dreams and plans for doing stuff up at Country Club Road, you know, what, what the property is. When that will be and what it will be, uh, you know, you could speculate till the cows come home. Yep. Um, and so, you know, the, the board's charge is to make a decision based on what's here, not all of the potential things that could happen moving forward, right? That's more in the property owner and the business or entity manager owner's perspective um, in the planning commission. Yep, understood. So anything that moved forward would be moving forward with the knowledge that if this were to have zoning approval, it has it through. Right. It has the zoning approval are, doesn't go away just yeah. because something next door changes. Yep. Understood. So perfect. Um, traffic was pretty much a non issue with the one van. I don't think we need to worry about that. Um, character of the neighborhood. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really change it. I mean we're not talking about Building any exterior uses, not like we're filling up the parking lot with cars. Um, I think we can agree with everyone that architectural does not apply. So I think what we came up with last time in terms of whether this would impact the use is considered with the neighborhood is that it was a temporary use and it's still a temporary use for only one year. So I don't. I don't really see that as having much impact. Um, is that, I have a question on, on that. So like, if it was a, so like temporary housing versus emergency shelter, like mm -hmm. is there a difference between the two? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's in the definitions and the regulations. I, I don't I don't have my book in front of me. I'd have yeah, to pull it up on the screen. Up, they are two different things. Okay. Um, and the. You know, and we actually changed. So, from the prior application for this use yep. to this one, we actually had an interim rule amendment mm. that created two different categories of emergency shelter versus emergency housing. Oh, okay. So, emergency shelter is this 
um, you know, short-term stay, emergency shelter, mm -hmm. um, versus we created a new category of emergency housing that was the sort of state-sponsored when we thought there was going to be state or government-sponsored when we thought there was going to be the FEMA housing up there. Right. Um, so there were some, some changes, um, including where those uses were permitted or conditional and how that all divvied out. Super helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, anybody have further questions about this or concerns? I'm uh, good. I'm in, um, interested in making a motion. Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready. Um, so a uh, motion to grant request for conditional use um, and minor site plan approval site plan approval to expand the emergency shelter at 203 Country Club Road for a total of 5,005 square feet um, and extend the maximum period um, for the temporary um, use to June 2025 um, as presented in application Z2024-0014 and supporting uh, materials subject to the following conditions of approval. Any use of the space at 203 Country Road for emergency shelter or for the uh, used to occur beyond January 1st, 2025, June, requires a Zoom. June 1st. June 1st, January. 2025. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Requires a zoning permit. Uh, so if I said January and anywhere that, strike that, and it uh, is uh, June 1st, 2025. Uh, it is the end date. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a motion. Um, I'll second the motion. Yes. Can discussion? I suggest a friendly amendment? Yeah. In the condition, instead of any use of space at two, two, that 203 Country Club Road, it should be any use of additional space. So I can't actually make the amendment. But if oh, I thought somebody, that's what I said. You skipped over additional space. I did I? Right. Yeah. It's hard okay. to read things on a phone. Well, uh, <laughs> accepted. Uh, any use of additional space at 203 Country Road, uh, okay. accepted. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, any further discussion? Friends on Zoom? No? Okay, all those in favor? Uh, let's maybe let's just do a roll call vote on yep. this. Um, Rob? Uh, yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Brian? Catherine? Yes. Joe? Yes. Alex? Yes. All right. I think that's unanimously approved then. So you vote yes? I did vote yes. Okay, I missed that. Oh, I did sorry. it right in my little arc here. I'm sorry I didn't wait till last first or something, but I just took my place on the line. Um, thank you very much, Julie. Um, it was great, and it sounds like you guys are doing good work up there. Thanks. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, everybody. So, any, any good questions? <laughs> Julie, the official decision will be when the written decision comes out, and will be a, there'll be a new permit. Do you want us to just mail those to you guys versus having you pick them up? I mean, you're already there, so it's not like there's a pressing need to get those posted on the building. Sure, that sounds great. Mail okay. Those, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Julie. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. All right. Uh, for us, I think we simply have the minutes to approve, which is... Well, you probably do you have those, or since you not those actually, I, I did read, also read those. Here they are. Okay. <laughs> uh, so um, the February fifth, two thousand twenty-four. Um, has everybody had a chance to review them? Uh, I wasn't there, but it was a little confusing because. Um, they're headed as request to install a new eight foot tall fence. What? What? And oh. the new fencing in the first paragraph, it says the new fencing will be 10 feet high, which is four feet higher than the eight feet section 3101 allows. So there's a lot of heights floating around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will, I can go back and check those I'm sorry somehow I missed those in proofing um, check so it is, it is 10 feet 
If I had to put my money down on something, it would be 10 feet. Yep. Yeah, no, it, it should, be, it should it say 10, 10 feet. feet. It should be 10 yep, feet. Yep, it should be 10 feet because the max... Because um, if they needed to install an 8-foot one, it wouldn't have needed yeah. any kind of variation. Yep. No, I'll just fix that, so 10 feet. And that's only 2 feet more than the yep. reg, right? 2 feet more than the regs and 2 less feet than it was. Catch. Um, well, no, 10 feet because the side yard isn't the max height, six feet. It's not two feet higher than the standard. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I didn't look at the application. I mean, I looked at it. Hmm. Yep. No, but that's the, the, the description, the review request to install a new, it should be 10 feet tall fence yeah yeah so that's that's the typo okay four feet higher than and the, the existing yeah. one is 12 feet the existing fence yeah yeah the existing yeah. non-conforming fence was 12 feet right. um and they want to build a 10 foot standard for side yards is six feet okay yep that is a good catch thank you Alex. thank you alex very much I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the February 5th minutes as amended. I would second that. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Okay. They are approved. Um, Sorry, some of my agenda items were a little out of order. This is what comes from me learning how to make the agendas on the electronic system. Okay. <laughs> um, so our next meeting is going to be April 1st. Um, do we have any applicants at this time? We do. Um, take a look at the pending applications page. We have two applications. Um, one is for changes to the um, smaller, older car wash um, on River Street. Okay. Um, and then, and that's a conditional use. It wasn't a conditional use when it first got built or when the most recent changes happened there, but it is now. So it has to come to you guys because um, they're a adding some to the footprint and changing what, what's going on there. Um, and then the other application is for a major site plan review of an addition to house moved offices at the Casella facility out on East Montpelier Road um, because their offices out there got horribly flooded back in July and they're having to demolish that building. So, Interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to chat about? Uh, yes. Just sort of an administrative item. Um, I am probably going to be making a, some changes to what your staff reports look like. Um, starting with this next meeting um, because I need to increase my efficiencies. Um, so it's going to look similar, um, but it's also going to look a lot more like just a draft decision, even more than it does already, um, because I've got to be able to pair my time as much as possible because Audra leaves in a very short amount of time. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Very, very short amount of time. Have you hired? We're not allowed to bring anybody on until the new fiscal year. Until July? Yeah. Yes. Whoa. Yes. So <laughs> it's going to be very busy. Um, where everybody in our office is learning different things that Audra does so that we can all take them on. Um, but I am the only person in the office authorized to issue any zoning permits of any sort. Um, so it's going to be very, very busy for a little while. And Meredith, the um, abbreviated format is temporary until this... I didn't say it was abbreviated necessarily, well, um, but we'll, we'll see, because it also depends the new person is going to have a ramp up time and will have different skill sets probably than Audra. Okay. Um, so it, it, will, it will be an adjustment, um, but... I, I'm good. too. I just can't imagine being less. I'm too thorough of a person and have too much legal training to have the decisions 
be too skimpy. So um, it, it'll still, there'll still be plenty of information, but there you may have a little more of needing to actually go and read the regulations yourselves here and there. Yeah, Let us I know, know how we can support you, Meredith, because <laughs> that's a lot of pressure to not be able to hire till the new fiscal year. Yeah. And you already do so much. Well, thank you. So the, on the first, it's the conditional use and major site plan or minor site plan? Major site plan. Major site plan. Right, so there's so. there's a conditional use application and there's a major site plan application. The major site plan application, when you go and look at it on the pending applications page, has like all of the flood stuff in it. Yeah. Um, some of that will be pulled back for your packets. But t to simplify things, when we get an application right now, we're scanning the entire thing mm -hmm. without breaking it up between building and zoning and flood because we've got to just get it scanned and processed and put into our system. Um, so some of the finer flood details are in what's out there right now, but that won't necessarily be in your packet for the meeting. So uh, another point might be to every, for everybody to look at their regulations before the next meeting and really look at the major site plan review criteria mm -hmm. so that um, so that we can start being a little more independent of Meredith's Yeah. And I was just going to add to that that both those applications are posted on the city's website right now. So, and I think it's it can be aggressive to try and tackle both of those in one meeting, but I think we can do it. And the more we can limit sort of uh, our clarification of questions of information that's already like very well spelled out in the applications, the you know the better. And if you have questions, try and you know maybe get them answered, you know, before coming to the meeting, so we can kind of get right to the discussion and, and right to the, the you know the meat of it. So. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I think we can we can do it efficiently um, if we're prepared. Yeah. Meredith, is there anything? I think this is going to be our first one with a lot of like flood info. Yeah, but so I mean, you just anything we should be aware of for that. Um, not really, because you don't have to make the flood decisions. Yeah, that's it's all me. That it's, it's more that it's just in there, so it's we can there, understand it. Right, and so they they've had to. You know, it doesn't go to the criteria you have to look at. But um, the new, the addition, they've had to elevate it, right? So the whole like basement area, all it can be used for is storage. Um, the first floor where actually people will be working and where they have any utilities all have to be elevated way up. Um, they have to have, you'll, you'll see in the plans that they have flood vents put in. Um, they also had to, because of, because they were building such a big expensive addition onto an existing maintenance garage, they actually had to upgrade the maintenance garage as well. Okay. So that, I mean, that information will be in the plans, but it doesn't come into play for you. As long as it meets the setbacks, the building height, um, you know, you're gonna look at the, because it's major site plan, you'll be looking at the architectural standards that apply about, you know, how they've broken up the exterior of the building, the look of the building, um, but, the you know how they've had to elevate it for flood doesn't doesn't come into play for the board okay well this would be interesting because our first one sort of um post flood in yeah. coming forward like this so yeah so we're using storm water which yeah well we've, yeah we've storm water comes into play erosion control all yeah. of that stuff still so still pops they up they did a bunch of moving of dirt on that site didn't too didn't they to Never. <laughs> so, so Sorry. that's a whole separate. That doesn't come before you guys. I have I know. three, three, four different layers of permits for all the work that they're doing there because of flood stuff. So, yeah, there's a bunch of other things that are going on in the site that are administrative site plan slash flood hazard. Yeah, yeah they did. They did berms, and then they had to reduce the berms. Yep, they did. <laughs> <laughs> that was both both uh, because of um, just v various state and local requirements, but nothing that came before the board. If the old whore farm gets turned into floodplain, will that matter? Uh -huh. um, I don't know what they call it now, but the family that used yep. to own it was H-O-A-R-E. Yep. Um, so... Um, the, will it matter is a really broad question. Um, so they will need a demolition permit for removing the structure if they remove the structure. Um, no, I'm thinking you know, of the stormwater. If there is a floodplain in the offing, and we like have to make all, to... What, what are we? Storm, stormwater stuff that triggers coming here would be adding impervious cover. 
um, or excavation to just, you know, and if their excavation is actually within the stream to reduce the stream bank so the water can enter, that's not our jurisdiction at all. That actually becomes a state jurisdiction, is my understanding. Um, and then it's not, it's not stormwater, it's just, it's floodplain that's different. Okay. I would make a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Right, See everybody on the first. Bye, Joe. Bye, Ed.